With the onset of adolescence, our youth are prepared to begin thinking in a different way about their faith, their theology, their beliefs, their values, and, and how they're going to apply these understandings to the choices that they will make in their lives. Our coming-of-age youth go through a crash course in UU identity and history and theology, and they undertake a systematic examination of perennial religious questions. Um, and they ask these questions not just of themselves, but they ask these questions among, uh, amongst their group, amongst their peers, um, with their coming-of-age teachers and advisors, and with the guidance of special mentors, one adult per youth, um, who helps them in the shaping of their own theology. The experience culminates uh, with this service today, um, as well as a trip to the Boston area um, in July that they'll uh, go on together to visit kind of that, that cradle of UU history um, and uh, be able to experience um, uh, Unitarian Universalism in the Northeast. There's a thought about coming of age um, expressed by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, be an opener of doors for such as come after thee, and do not try to make the universe a blind alley. Be an opener of doors for such as come after thee, and do not try to make the universe a blind alley. And my prayer and meditation this morning is inspired by that admonition. I invite you to join with me in the spirit of prayer and meditation and thanksgiving. Dear Spirit of God, source of our being and our becoming, let us be aware and grateful for all those in our lives who have opened doors of, for us. Parents and elders, teachers and advisors, those who took a special interest in us, those who took an interest in our education, in our spiritual and religious formation, who opened doors for us to walk through so that we might become who we are. For these, we give thanks, and we reflect in this time of prayer on the imperative in our own lives to open doors for others. to counsel and to guide, to teach and to advise, to hold open doors so that those who come after us may flourish and live freely. In this act of opening doors, our own minds are open. Our own hearts are expanded. Our own souls are touched. So may we listen with open minds and open hearts as the coming-of-age youth of this church share their own discoveries, their own credos, their own professions of faith at this point in their journey. And let us know that they do not journey alone, but journey within a community that we have created for them. So may it be, blessed be, and amen. So my very first church job was as the youth advisor at the first church in Boston where I led a coming-of-age program for a group of youth about your age. And uh, 
That spring, we took an outing. We took a canoe trip on the Concord River. Concord is that the home of Emerson and Thoreau and, and Alcott and a lot of famous Unitarians, and we were going to take a canoe trip on the Concord River and visit some of the historical sites in Concord. Um, and so we went and we rented canoes, and, and then we had a, a bad idea, which was that all of the adults would be in one canoe and all of the youth would be in one canoe. And, and five minutes into our voyage, the youth had managed to capsize their canoe. Now, the Concord River is a pretty boring river. It's a pretty wimpy river. It doesn't flow fast. It's pretty shallow. It's right runs through uh, these nice backyards and big houses in Concord. And while it's a pretty wimpy river, in April it is really, really, really cold. And so the youth managed to pull their canoe full of water to the shore, and they were there drenched head to toe, shivering, and their lips were turning blue. And the youth huddled and made a decision about what they were going to do. And what they were going to do was walk across one of those nice backyards and go to one of those houses and ring the doorbell. And when the person, the homeowner, opened the door, they said, and I quote, we're cold, we're wet, we're Unitarian Universalists. Please help us. And the homeowner brought out towels, and the youth managed to be kind of standing in this person's driveway, wrapped in towels while their clothes spun to get dry in the dryer. And that was our trip canoeing <laughs> on the Concord River. One parent said to me in, that, in the driveway, said, have they really come of age? They look like a pretty pathetic lot to me. And I said, I think they have come of age. They realize that they are in need of other people. There's a reading in the back of our hymnal by George O'Dell that goes, we need one another. We need one another when we mourn and would be comforted. All of our lives, we are in need of other people, and others are in need of us. When we think of coming of age, many of us imagine in some romantic way Indigenous cultures around the world, Native American tribes, Afri African tribes, Pacific Islanders, who in those cultures will sometimes put adolescence through a spiritual and physical challenge where go and you sort of have to leave the village, go and spend a week living on the mountainside, go out and spend a month in the wilderness. And we as kind of Western people think, oh, how, how romantic to get to go up and spend a week all alone on the mountainside. But what's happening is actually something very different. Um, in those cultures, youth grow up without a lot of privacy, without a lot of individuality. Many of them live in homes with large extended families, spend, share rooms with brothers and sisters and parents, and aunts and uncles and cousins sometimes. Sometimes share beds with your brothers and your sisters. Very, very close. And that experience of going out into the wilderness, it's not experienced as liberation. It is actually experienced as terrifying. This idea of being there without your people, without your family, without your community. It's freeing, but it's also terrifying. And the coming of age happens when you actually return, return to the village, return to the community, and realize, in a way, your deep need of one another. Your childhood, my childhood, our childhoods were very different. You have more freedom, more independence, and more privacy than young people at virtually any point in human history. And it may not feel that way to you, but it's true. You've got your own bed, don't you? Some of you have your own room. Most of you don't have large extended family living with you. You got a lot of space, a lot of privacy. It may not feel, that freedom may not feel there, but it will. It will come. And as the choices come and as the years come, 
each week and each month and each year will bring all new opportunities to grow and discover and journey choices in your life of what will you become, who will you be with, who will you choose as friends, who will you choose as loved ones, what you'll do for a career, what you'll do for your education, what you'll do for civic involvement. All of those choices will come in multitude in the months and years ahead. And so as we think of coming of age as the opening of a door, it's actually not an open door that we say, go out, leave, go out into the mountainside and forget about us. It's actually a door into community. It's a door that's open to come back in, to come back with your friends, your family, your mentors, that network of community, that network of people who know you, who are pulling for you, who are rooting for you, who want to see you blossom in your life. The door is open, and it is open for you to come in. Amen. And thank you for sharing yourselves with us this day.